So I'm Stacy Ferreira and I'm from San Francisco, California. I started a company called My Social Cloud with my brother, which is an internet security company and that recently was acquired by Reputation.com. The biggest message that I wanted to bring to everyone today is that it's super important to go out and follow your passion, find opportunities, and take risks. Um, go out and do what you love and find a way to make it work. Summits and events are so important. You meet tons of awesome people that give you new perspectives and new ideas on businesses that you're working on or businesses that you might work on in the future. So it's great to just come out and meet and connect with new people. So to start off my journey, um, I'll tell you a little bit of a background. I grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona um, with two parents and yeah, you're from Scottsdale or you know of it? Awesome. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Scottsdale um, with my parents and my brother who's actually traveled halfway across the world with me and is sitting over there, Scott. Um, yeah, we can clap for him for coming all the way over here. <laughs> um, so we grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was going to public school my whole life, going um, elementary school and middle school. And then when it turned to be time for me to go to high school, my parents gave me the option of either going to public school with all my friends or going to an all-girls Catholic private high school. And at the time, I was thinking about this decision, and I was um, saying, you know, the easy decision is obviously going with all my friends and staying in my comfort zone and going to the public high school. Um, and I sat down with one of the biggest influences of my life, again, my brother, um, and he encouraged me to take that leap of faith and jump out of my comfort zone to do something different. And so I did, and I went to the all-girls Catholic private high school in Phoenix. And from there, I noticed that, again, all my friends were in the public school, and now I was at a new school where I didn't have many friends. Um, but I took that opportunity, and again, with my brother's guidance, um, we sat down and we started teaching ourselves to program in high school. Rather than going out and hanging with all these friends that we didn't have yet, um, we would sit down in our room and we would teach ourselves how to, how to program starting with basic HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Um, and so that's what we did in high school. And this progressed for a little while. And you can see here, I eventually had friends. But um, then I went on to learn the biggest lesson of my life, which is do more than think. And so as, as we were learning to program all these new languages, we were thinking about all these businesses that we could start, all these fun things that we could do with this knowledge. Um, and we were playing around with it for a little while. And then we decided, you know, why, why are we playing around with this and continuing to play around with this? It's been a couple years now. We've been in high school. We've been teaching ourselves. Now it's time to do something with this. It's time to not just think about these fun little businesses that, that we could have and play around with them here and there, but it's time to actually go out and build something. And so after high school, my brother and I decided that summer, before I went off to college, that we would start a business. And so what we did is we started a business based off of a problem that we had. Um, throughout, throughout high school and then in my senior year, um, my brother and I had stored all of our usernames and passwords in an Excel spreadsheet. And that senior year, my brother's computer crashed and he lost all of that information. And so we decided, do more than think. We're gonna build an online website that allows people to store all of their usernames and passwords and auto log into everything so that they don't have to remember usernames and passwords. So that's what we did. My brother and I decided this is the business that we would build. And so we moved to this apartment in South Central Los Angeles, which I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with South Central Los Angeles. In California, it's not the place that you wanna live. Um, as you can see, there are bars over the windows and things of that sort. We lived um, and slept on air mattresses um, in this really run-down 500-square-foot apartment. Um, but that was all that we needed, really, at the time to get our business going. And so my brother and I sat there um, in this office, and we started outlining the product of what we wanted it to look like. And it started with a simple pen and paper outline. Um, this is what the product is going to look like. This is how it's going to work. This is how it's going to interact. Um, and after that, we decided, okay, now that we have our outlines in paper, let's go and let's transfer this into an online product. And so we started doing that. And as we were doing that that summer, building this startup in that, that place in South Central Los Angeles, um, I saw a tweet from this guy. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys know who Sir Richard Branson is. Over here, it seems to be a big name in the United States. Um, 
I'm trying to educate that he is, he is a fantastic guy. But I saw this tweet that said, enjoy intimate cocktails plus two parties with me in Miami on June 15 and 16, 2000 to charity. And so as you can see, it's not outlined, but the one above that is an email address. And so what I did while I was sitting in that apartment is I took that email address and I emailed and said, Hello, Sir Richard. I am not old enough to legally drink cocktails in the United States, which is where Miami is, um, but I would love to come meet you in Miami. And so my brother and I stayed up all night waiting to see if we would get a response. And later that night, we got an email back from a secretary that said, yeah, if you and your brother would love to come to Miami, you have 48 hours to donate $4,000, $2,000 apiece, and fly to Miami. And so my brother and I are sitting there thinking, wow, this is amazing. We can go to Miami and we can meet Richard Branson. And then right after we had that thought, we had the thought of we're also broke college kids who don't have $4,000, which is why we're living in this 500 square foot apartment. And so at that time, we were thinking of all the ways and the things that we could do to get this $4,000 to fly to Miami to meet Richard Branson. And the only thing that popped up in our mind that was how are we going to get $4,000 in 48 hours was call up mom and dad and see if they would take a chance on us. And so that's what we did. We called up our dad and our mom and we said, hey guys, so we saw this tweet on Twitter, which my parents have no idea what Twitter is, and basically we need to borrow $4,000 from you to fly from California to Miami across country um, in order to meet Richard Branson. And at the time, my parents were like, this is a scam. You guys don't understand. Someone's just putting this on the internet. It's, it's not really something that you spend $4,000 to do. But my brother and I said, no, it's Twitter. He has a verified profile. It has the check. We're, we're going to borrow this money, and we're going to fly over there. And so my dad was like, you know what? This will be a lesson for you both in money management. Um, if you write a proposal for me and convince me in the next 24 hours that this is something that I should spend some of my money to loan you to go do, then I'll consider it. And so my brother and I stayed up and we were writing out proposal after being tired of staying up all night waiting for this email. Um, and we just outlined this whole proposal for him of, you know, where's the money going? Well, we're donating it to charity. And how are we going to pay him back? Well, we'll sell everything that we have, which consists of like dolls and things that we had accumulated, you know, growing up, um, and pr put together this proposal and sent it to him. And he said, all right, again, a lesson in money management. I will loan you guys the $4,000, but you have to pay me back in three months, so before you go back to college. And so at the time, $4,000 for two kids, I was 18, my brother was 20, is a lot of money. But we said, all right, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Let's take that money and let's go. And so one of the biggest lessons that I learned is find good opportunities and take those risks. Because what happened next is pretty unbelievable. So we went to those two nights of parties that you read about on the tweet. And we, the first night was in a room of 18 people, intimate cocktails with Richard Branson, just as the tweet had said, not what my parents thought where he would come in for two seconds and leave. We actually spent a couple hours in that room with him, talking about our business ideas and the things that we were doing. Um, and so those two nights at those parties. And after that, we were really motivated. And we went back to Los Angeles. And we worked on our product even more. And so we built what is, I guess, people call an MVP, our, our, the minimum viable product, the thing that we wanted to build with no flashy lights or anything. It was just straight product. And so this was our first iteration of what is my social cloud. And after that, um, we sent it over to Branson. And he took a look at it. And he said, you know, this is pretty good. Let me introduce you to a friend of mine, Jerry Murdoch. And Jerry Murdoch started a company, or I guess a, a venture capital firm called Insight Venture, venture Partners. And we were talking with Jerry over email and over phone. And a couple weeks later, he flew out to meet us in Los Angeles. And he drilled us on our business and asked us a million of questions. And that night, we went out to dinner with Jerry. And Jerry said that he and Branson would both invest just about a million dollars into our idea, all coming from a tweet. Um, and so we upgraded to a new loft um, after we got that million dollars, and we were sort of living on the outskirts of South Central LA, um, but a better place, no doubt, still with our air mattresses. Um, and we were able to hire a little bit of a team to keep working on our product even more. 
And so this is where we were. But then I, again, had just graduated high school. And so my parents said, it's awesome that you guys got the investment, that you're doing this business, that you were able to pay us back, actually. Um, but you haven't gone to college yet, so you have to go to college. Um, and so at that time, it was, it was kind of up in the air, but my parents said, you know, you and your brother are only two kids. One of you is going to have to go, and you haven't gone yet, so you're going to go. So I moved from Los Angeles to New York City, and I went to NYU for a year, studying something completely unrelated to technology. I studied music business. And I worked and did school out of this dorm room um, in New York City. And after, and I guess to go along with that, um, and during that time period, we had a couple, a couple blunders that I'll talk about. Um, one of them being this one, where we were getting a lot of feedback from our users um, talking about things like, hey, you know, we're using your service for usernames and passwords. We'd also love to use it to store bookmarks. We'd love it for a million other things. And we were getting all this feedback. And earlier, someone was talking about, you know, everyone's a data point. Um, we were getting a lot of these data points saying, hey, we want bookmarks. And so we did something with the product, which was roll out this bookmarking feature. So not only did we store usernames and passwords, but we stored websites that you'd love to keep. Um, and we did this for a while, and then we started looking again at the data and, again, asking our users a million things and going around to different college campuses, NYU, um, University of Southern California, lots of different college campuses around the United States and asking questions particular to our product. Hey, are these things you guys want to use? Are these things you would use, things that you don't want? Um, and after kind of going through this whole process of, you know, we accumulated all this data, we started rolling out features, we started asking around, and then we realized that this wasn't necessarily something um, that was good for our product, though we were putting a lot of time and energy towards it. And so I learned one of the biggest, or I guess the biggest quote of my life that I always quote when talking about failure to people, is that failure depends on your expectation of learning. And so people always ask me, what's one of the biggest product fails that you've ever made? And I always point back to this thing where it was, you know, we implemented something and put engineering time towards something that um, wasn't, after looking at more data points, wasn't necessarily necessary. Um, and so I learned this lesson after kind of going back and analyzing all that data was that we, would, we didn't really fail from this thing. We learned from this. And so failure depends on your expectation of learning. Um, failure leads to a lot of learning opportunities, but making sure that they're not seen as failure, but rather as learning. Um, and so from that, we decided to rip out all of our bookmarks and all of these extra features that we had added into the product and focus, go back to just usernames and passwords. And so that's what we did. We revamped our entire site, um, saying bye-bye to passwords and um, bye-bye to bookmarks. And so after learning all of these things, um, having some blunders with the product, after a year, I decided it's not time for me to be in school. It's time for me to go back to Los Angeles and help run the business with my brother. And so that's what I did. I took a, a leave of absence from NYU, which I am still technically on. Um, <laughs> And I moved back to Los Angeles to work full time again on my social cloud, um, which was one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life. And so from there, we decided um, we were going to roll out more features core to usernames and passwords, um, things like auto login um, that help just make our product easier. We started ramping up a lot of marketing. Um, I guess a lot of marketing efforts, but free marketing efforts since a lot of our investors are big on getting free press. And so that's some of the stuff that we did. We rolled out our team to 10 people. So um, we had 10 people working at my social cloud full time. And then as we were getting ready to raise our Series A, um, raising the next round of money that we needed to kind of go forward, um, this guy, whose name is Michael Furtick, walked into our office. And my brother and I were talking to him, expecting, you know, He's an angel investor. We're going to raise our Series A. He's going to come in and talk to us about this or a potential partnership with another company that he's running. But he walked into our offices, and as we were talking about the vision of the business, he came to us and said, I run a business called Reputation.com based out of the Bay Area, and your guys' vision aligns a lot with where we'd like to go in the future. Let's start talking about an acquisition. 
And so over the next course of the couple, a couple weeks and a couple months, my brother and I discussed this idea of, you know, what are the pros and cons of getting a Series A and continuing the business on our own versus getting an acquisition and teaming up with someone who has the resources and the talent that we need to really go further so that we don't have to necessarily think about where's our next round of funding coming from all of the time. And so after a couple hard months of thinking about this problem, we decided to get acquired by reputation.com, which has been one of the greatest things. As I kind of mentioned the pros before, you know, teaming up with a, a company that has the technical talent that you need, teaming up with a company that has the resources that you need, the acquisition was great. And after that, I've been working on a couple of new projects while also working at Reputation. Um, and some of those being things like starting a group called 2 Billion Under 20 that helps kids that are 20 and under 20 start on their own path and start their own journey with the resources they need. And in all of this, I've learned another quote that I'll leave you with, which is, the world is not as it is, the world is as we make it. And so with that, I encourage all of you to go out and create the world that you want to create. Thanks. Thank you very much, Stacey. Um, I think we've got time for a few questions. Um, have, have we got the mics? Yeah? Uh, okay, well, we've got one. Um, has anyone got any questions? Do you want to? In short, why did uh, bookmark fail? Just in short, just a few That was, why, why did bookmarks fail? Definitely. So I think one of the biggest things, again, goes back to focus, and that we had put a lot of time and effort over the past year and a half that we had spent building up the username and password portion, and then we had asked just a couple people, just a couple of our users, um, you know, is the bookmarking feature something that you'd like, based off of feedback that we were getting from emails and things from other users, um, and based off of, you know, not as many data points as we probably should have, we decided to roll out that feature, and then when we went back and said, why is this feature not getting as, many, as much usage as we expected it to, we went back and did a larger data sample and saw that that was only a very small fraction of our users that were actually using that. And so we decided, again, to switch focus and go back to what the core 90% of our users were using. So any more questions? Yes, right at the front. Just here, Camilla. Um, just a two-prong question. I mean, what's been the most challenging aspect of your journey, and what's been the most enjoyable aspect? Oh, boy. Um, OK, so enjoyable was probably a lot of things. Um, when Richard Branson decided to invest, because mm -hmm. largely because of Twitter, that's pretty enjoyable and not something that we expected at all. Um, so that has been great. And then um, the most challenging, there have been a lot of challenging things. Um, hiring is always one of those things that people mention. And I think, especially in our case, there were uh, two people in particular that we hired that weren't necessarily the best fits um, and learned a lot from that. Um, but hiring is always challenging. There's a question up the back, yeah? Is there another microphone that's here? No, I think, but no. <laughs> Um, is this on? Yeah. Um, see central websites storing passwords. Has your servers been compromised at all out all these years? It hasn't. Um, and that's been something that's been awesome. And also, going back to challenging, um, from a development standpoint, I know that that's been very, very challenging. And seeing our engineers have all these inbound kind of attacks going on, but it's never been compromised. Has it been going on for them? Because I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it's happening, to be honest. Sorry, you said how many years has it been going on yeah. for? Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's been about two years since its inception. Um, or I guess two years prior to acquisition, and now it's been about three years. Awesome. Thank you very much, Stacey. That was brilliant. Definitely.